Hey guys, in this video I wanted to go through which tools and websites um, I personally use and what sort of, um, you know, what, what why I use them and um, I'm going to be going through them for two projects mainly just because this is what I use, this is my, these two projects are my trading grounds. Um, again, you can use, I'm sure every project has their own community of people making different tools and uh, websites for them, but um, as far as I know, these are the ones for this particular project. So again, OpenSea is great for a bunch of different reasons. It's great to execute transactions. It's also great to, uh, it's a marketplace. It also tells you some data, some volume of top trending projects, uh, which is great for OpenSea. I'm going to go through uh, how to transact, um, how to make certain transactions a little bit later. But uh, one really good tool that I use, for me, when I talk about tools and websites, the best the reasons why I use them are one, to be educated on the data more than others, because at the end of the day you are competing with other people in the space that are that have money that want to buy and sell just like you, or want to buy and hold just like you, and the marketplace it's a competition. So the more ahead of the competition you can be in knowledge and understanding the direction of the market, and the more leads you can have happening, the more people you can be talking to at the same time the more opportunity that you can capitalize on than others, right? The more you're doing this, the more time you're spending on this than others. That's the reason why I'm doing this full time because I can spend more time on this than other people, spot more opportunities, conduct more deals, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, so one really good tool um, is the token tycoon bot that I have. Um, or any sort of notifier, but you can probably make this yourself if you want to, or you can, um, you know, join one of these already made. Token Tycoon is a bot made by a really good developer called Sai. Um, and the really cool thing about this is I can put a certain parameter to notify me when certain lands are for sale. So I tell this thing to tell me when lands connected to roads are for sale, um, or lands or Blessed Chimera, which is a card that I'm chasing, or Diamond Legendaries. I can tell it to do all kinds of things, right? I really want to make a more intricate filter. I want it to tell me when certain lands or certain opportunities are there as well. That, for example, a land that's connected to a road that's under 15,000, for example, or an estate that's under 10,000 a parcel, for example. But um, I'm going to set that up. But no, being notified when set, something goes for sale speed is everything in um on a marketplace like this the quicker you can react to deals being listed the quicker you can grab it before someone else right and if you're just right one or two times like if you're getting three of these out of ten then that's still three that you're you know, three that you're making money off so the quicker you are the better it's going to be for you now in the case of gods unchained um you really want to know which cards are being used um often and this website does a really good job of that, cardsunchained.com. This is top trending cards for the, in order of the number of times they're being played in decks um, or in game. And at the end of the day, the more popular a card is, the more utility it has and the more people are going to purchase it, right? It just makes sense that way. So you can see Pyramid Warden, Trojan Golem, Demogorgon, Rolling Watcher, Jason as a legendary. Um, these are the ones that are one going going up in value as well a lot faster than the others but they are also being used more so for me it's a safe bet in investing in these as long as you're not buying at an uptrend oh no not an uptrend i mean like at a uh, at the top of the trend um you want to be buying at a good price but you also want to know that it's going to be used a lot the only risk to this is if they release more cards that kind of take these out of meta and um, they start using the new cards, right? So, but at the end of the day, this is a tool that's really good to tell you which direction the market's going, which ones are being more popular, which ones are being used more. And uh, GU Dex is also another similar thing. Uh, we can go to the card rankings page, and you can also see the number of matches they're being played in, uh, the number, the percentage of win rate per card, number of copies. So you can see people normally have two copies or around two copies in the deck. Um, it's winning a lot of matches, so the Pyramid Warden naturally is going to be worth more, right? So if you go to Rare, um, 
You can see Pyramid Warden is the highest rare card in its category. You've also got these other cards, but it's almost double the price of Trojan Golem. It's almost double. It's more than double the price of um, this card, and and kind of eclipses these other cards by like three to four x. Um, it's because it's so popular, right? And you also can see the supply number. Um, it's going less and lesser. The more supply there is, generally the more expensive the card is. Um, there's not much supply here compared to this. Others, it's like half or less than half, and that's why the price is a lot, lot more. So, for you know, those tools tell you like if you're really quick, you can start to see if you have the data on this. You can see that these are being used in matches um, quite frequently. You can click on the card, and if you're really quick in November when it was released in the market. Uh, you could have picked them up at 0 0.015, 0 0.02, now they're sitting at 0 0.04, so you could have been quick to double your money. So again, that type of data is really good trend data as to where it's going. You can also see, which is really important metric, how often they're being bought. You want to make sure that every day, you know, people are buying tons of these. You can see on Jan 12, 11 were bought, 43 were bought here, 15, 5, so people are continuing to buy these by 10s or 20s. Um, so it's only going to get higher and higher, right? And it, you know the next 5, 10, 20, 25, 30 will take you to 4, 10. But then after that, really quickly, you're going in the 5, 6, 7 range. So I personally think that these rare cards are going to increase really, really quickly once additional functionalities are increased or added to Token Probe or other marketplaces where you can buy these like 50 at a time. Um, so that's an interesting space. Um, one. OpenSea is really good for conducting private transactions. Now, in the case of, if you've seen the other video where I purchased um, those two Diamond Legendaries, the, re the way I made that purchase was to get him to sell it to me as a private deal. And you can use that on, you can do that on OpenSea where you can add privacy and you can put in the buyer's address. So he put in my address. So when he put this for sale, only I can buy this because only my address fits the criteria. No one else can buy this. So you can list this card for 0.001 Ethereum and put my address. Everyone might see it, but only I can buy it. So that's a really good functionality of OpenSea. And it really saves you a lot of um, headaches by them putting it up on the marketplace and then you having to be really, really quick to pick it up. You know, someone else might pick it up before you do. And there's all these kinds of risks. So going with OpenSea to conduct private deals, so that's a really good tool. Um, uh, yeah, Token Tycoon, we went through that. Now, nonfungible.com is really great to see sales history. Um, it, it goes through a bunch of different projects. You can see there's Axie Infinity, Blockchain Cuties, Chain Breakers, Crypto Kitties, blah, blah, blah. Now, Decentraland, it gives me sales history on Decentraland. The really good thing is it will tell me when the land sold, how much it sold before in fiat, in mana. You can also click on the seller's address. Um, I can click on the seller's address and see if the seller has more lands. And this is one thing I do often. Uh, sorry, I don't. I don't go there. I paste this in the uh, marketplace as the address, and then I kind of see if the seller has more lands. And then I also see if the seller is a known address. So I, if he's got some contact details, I can contact him and say, "Hey, look, notice you sold a land recently. I can offer you to sell your next, your whole portfolio." And it kind of gives you more information as to who's more serious in selling. And that's really good. It also gives you um, a history of how often this land was sold. So you can see this one specifically. Um, can I scroll more down? Oops. Where are we? Um, okay, let's click here again. So this one sold for 9,950 mana two years ago, then for 20,000, then 15, 17, now 22 again, slowly crept up once again. And you can see this, apart from the spike buy. And in terms of crypto and mana, it's gone up in value. In terms of fiat, not as much, but you can see that it's slowly going up. You can also see how often it was bought and sold. So that's pretty cool about that. Um, so nonfungible.com is great for sales history. Another really, really awesome tool is this um, this map by NFT Crypto News, a Spidey Monkey, he goes by in Discord. And he's made this kind of 3D view map of Decentraland land build heights, right? Now, the more land you have connected to each other, the more 
land you have kind of combined, the higher you can build with this center land. That's why estates or lands that are um, joined together are worth a lot more. And you can see here, um, this is just two land estates. So lands that are only two in um, size, two lands connected, can only build this high. But the moment you start to get like 10 plus, you can start to build with some really high buildings. So this only gives us a view of how high you can build for each area and some really large areas and spaces. Like uh, I think this one's about 122 lands connected. And then you've got these really massive ones like this one. Um, you've got this really massive 243 piece. Oops. Um, this one here is 243 pieces. Looks like this one's even more bigger. But um, I feel like these are going to be where some larger game devs or some larger companies that really need that space are either going to rent these lands or buy these lands um, once the world is released. Um, just because it, they kind of tower over the, the rest and I'm not sure how visible they are from say 10 or 15 lands away, but I would assume they'd be much more visible than you know a single parcel, which, which is um, 20 meters in build height. The formula used, um, this is from dclpuzzles.com, is 20 meters times log 2 n plus 1, n being the number of parcels in there. So if this is um, one parcel, then this formula becomes 20 meters. If it's two parcels, then it becomes log 2, um, or log 3 to the base of 2, I think that's how you say it, times 20. And if you kind of math that out, you can see that number of connected lands and the meters of the height that you can build, 20 meters on a single parcel, um, when you have four joined, it's, it doubles, actually three joined, it actually doubles. Once you start getting 10 or more, it, it kind of triples and quadruples, it, it, it gets pretty big. You need about 30 parcels joined to get 100 meters in height. So it gives you some space to build levels, you know, if you're building games and, and, and buildings of that sort, mansions and all that kind of stuff. That's why estates are kind of valued a lot more, although they, they're much harder to sell because, you know, rarely does an investor come by come by with like 10 million mana or 5 million mana to purchase some of these larger spaces. But when they do, they, they don't have many to choose from. You know, there's only like five or six maybe, um, uh, five or six maybe estates that have lands that are, you know, a hundred plus in size. Okay. So I'm assuming that the rental market might be pretty good for these. Um, but overall, the value proposition is a lot more for estates, just just based on build height alone. Um, some other really cool thing that uh, this decentral uh, decentral land map thing can do is you can kind of put a heat map on asking price. So um, you know, depending on all these lands that are for sale, you can start to see which ones are you know in the cheaper range. Um, once this thing loads, you'll be able to see it. Um, you can also see auction price. So when they were auctioning the first auction. Um, and some one really cool one is, and I'm going to go through this a little bit later, is top 20 owners. But you can see here that it tells you how much each land is kind of priced at. Um, and you can see, you can see, um, uh, the green ones are just the cheaper ones. Red is just completely overpriced, so you can kind of skip them. It's really cool. I think you can also buy these straight from the marketplace. If you click this, um, can you buy this straight from the, oh, you can buy it straight from OpenSea. That's pretty cool. So you click buy now and buy it straight from OpenSea. That's actually really, really cool. It might give you a really good way of making, uh, making you know, good deal. So this one is, um, this one's listed on, I think the Decentraland marketplace. So that's, that might, that might be the reason why you can't actually put a buy it for sale. But anyway, there's that, there's also, Top 20 owners, so this kind of gives you a view of the whales in Decentraland. Probably avoid number one because um, that one, I'm pretty sure, is the Decentraland wallet, which includes all of these districts and Genesis plazas, etc. But if you look at number two and beyond, you know, the top 19 or so wallets that own, it's really cool to see that even with all of them combined, they don't own the majority of Decentraland. Um, 15, 27, 4, 5 six, seven, so it's about maybe nine to 10,000, maybe 9,000 lands amongst all of them. So they own about 20% of supply, um, something around that range. So about 20% is owned by 19 top wallet holders. Um, 
and that's not even including the central land. Um, which I think own these as well. So anyway, it's good to see and good to kind of see the distribution of where they're located at, the, their buying methods during the auction and beyond. But yeah, it's a pretty cool map, pretty cool website that shows you shows you an overview of Decentraland. I'm pretty sure Spidey Monkey does the same for, I think, Crypto Voxels as well. And uh, he's just a really good, talented dev. So I would be following nftcryptonews.com. This one is also really good for telling you not only how often it's been bought and sold, so this is uh, mydcl.net, it's going to give you some additional information which is really important. It also tells you how frequently it's been listed or every time a transaction has been made when a, a land has been updated for sale price. You can see this guy um, listed it for 460,000 mana one year ago, then it slowly, slowly, slowly come down for 30, 410, 419, 399, 370, 350. You can see here he was really serious on selling it. Then he kind of bumped it back up again. So around here you can see he's he's in the mood to sell. So if you kind of find his address, you can kind of offer him something. This kind of gives you a, a indication of their intention. How serious are they to sell? So it kind of, I guess it's kind of like a warmer lead or a hot lead. Basically gives you more indication as to how what deals or or conversations you should be spending more time on. Now, Metalith is a new um, website, kind of, I think they'll start to cover more projects, but at the moment, they give you a land, they're doing decentral land, and you can, they give you um, an index on land prices. So you can see, this is, this is the map, um, so if you want to see the center of the map and the west side of the map, you can kind of see an average or indication as to which parts of the uh, decentral land map are more expensive than others. You can see the bottom west is not as you know as pricey as the um, middle west, or then you got the center, which should be a, um, a bit different. The thing, the problem with the center is off off uh, lands don't sell as often. Um, then you got the bottom, and it kind of gives you a bit of indication. But I think we need a lot more data to give us solid indication as to how this is going to work. Um, it also has a market metric, which is really, really cool. This one, what it does, is it gives you a bunch of different information. This is the stuff I really want to know. I want to know how many number of passes are less than 10k mana. Back when I was having a conversation with these guys, I told them 10,000 mana, but I really want 15,000 mana now because land is now 12,000 mana and above. So if you can keep an eye on how many lands under 15,000 mana there are, and if, that's, if that number is decreasing, what rate it's decreasing at, then you know that the land market's going to continue to go up. Number of parcel listings, number of estate listings, I'd love to have these graphed out. But um, this is really cool information. And there's also for Decentraland, lastly, DCL Plaza's last but definitely not least. Um, these guys have this interactive map that tells you where uh, certain games are being deployed, so where to log in. Um, you know, this is the Decentraland map. And you can see which districts amusement park you can you can visit these so once you click on it then you can kind of go in there and check it out and it's really good to see an overview map of where hot properties are starting to pop up you can see this area is kind of becoming like a hot zone with stuff to do hopefully this little area will become a similar type of place where you can kind of which is going to start having more activity and um, just generally you can kind of get a feel for where let's scroll down um, where places are getting more popular this map is going to continue to fill out and it will be interesting to see what kind of things there are to check out so those are some tools that I use to one keep ahead you also want to have want to be having conversations with people so because of my Twitter and I'm very grateful for my Twitter and the discord and other places of chatting to people. I can kind of get an indication as to what features are being released soon and how that may influence the market. I know that um, Token Trove is going to add the functionality to buy cards in bulk. So as soon as you can start to buy hundreds of cards in the one transaction, well, suddenly people are going to start buying hundreds and hundreds of rares, hundreds of commons, and these prices are going to go up quite high, in my opinion. So I'm going to be acting on that um, in the way that I think will work the best. 
which um, is buying a lot of rare chests. For me, rare chests are like one of the best investments. Personally, like this, these views are completely my own. Um, you know, don't don't make investment decisions purely based on my comments. But for example, rare chests benefit from the whole market going up because in a rare chest, there's six packs of cards, and each pack of card contains five cards. Um, sorry, each yeah. So there's about 30 cards in each rare chest of the original Genesis set. There's only about, I think, 10,000 rare chests currently out there. So they're very rare to hold. I have about 100, 140 of them, but they benefit from the whole marketplace going up. So if rare cards and common cards also start going up, then I think rare chests will also go up naturally. So for me, investing in these is, is just like a safe bet. It might not go up as much, but it's gonna go up consistently. And whether it's three, four months from now, I know that my money is safer in these, just in terms of consistent growth. So this is a really big part of my portfolio. I'm also going to be investing in some other cards just because I feel like when that feature comes out, it's going to go nuts. So that's it. Those are some tools and that's just the mentality I have. There's plenty of tools out there, guys. I can't go through every single one of them. Um, these are just for two projects. You can imagine there's like another 15 to 20 NFT projects that are considerably um, good. And they all have their own community projects to figure them out. But at the end of the day, you want to be keeping up with how quickly you're notified on items being listed, um, the direction the market's taking, so data on graphs and the volume of purchasing and security when trading and keeping up to date with conversations. So that's it for now and I'll see you guys in another video.